see if we can pit him against David Marcus backstage and see what happens. Um, our next guest is from Razer, who's into gaming on the PC. You guys seem really engaged. Hey, Sam. What's up, man? All right, uh, let's just get it started because you guys are bored of me. Please welcome to the stage Min Liang Tan from Razer and Ingrid London. Hi, Min. Hello. Thanks hi. for taking some time to come. Thank you for having me. So, Razer. You guys have built Razer as big peripherals hardware company for gamers, by gamers. You're doing, a gamer is your, your, your thing. Now you are doing something a little bit different. Um, tell us about your, you've got some news today. Why don't you tell us about what you're doing? Sure. So, so very quickly, I think in the past couple of years, um, we've got, uh, we're a bit of a startup with a bit of a longer pedigree of sorts. So we've been around for about 10 years since we were founded. And um, we've done everything from hardware, so we've shipped uh, over 20 million connected devices worldwide. We've got uh, a massive software platform of gamers. We've got about 20 million active gamers that come online every single day to uh, connect with us. And I think one of the questions that was uh, uppermost in our minds was, what's next? What else can we do? So today, you know, we're announcing a, a, a corporate venture fund. We're calling, calling it Z Ventures. So it's a $30 million fund from Razer. We're investing it off balance sheet, um, really focused at early stage startups that um, Razer, with our kind of um, uh, structure, can bring value add to the startups that we invest in. Right. Would you say that this is Razer's way of trying to diversify itself? Because if I remember, recall, the Z Ventures is doing stuff in robotics, but also stuff like e-commerce, supply chain management. You know, it's a real soup to nuts kind of investment thing. So wh what are you guys doing? So I think there are a couple <laughs> of different focuses over here. The first of which is um, I think we're looking at startups that Razer can bring value to. We know that there are lots of startups with um, a whole lot of um, exciting technology, you know, solutions, products. So for us, we're really focused on companies that Razer can help. So we're not a traditional VC by any means. Um, we're looking at, for example, for the, we've got our user base that we want to bring across to um, startups out there. Now, over and above, we've got um, a lot of experience um, in the hardware and software, and hardware is really hard. Everything from prototyping to EVT, DVT, mass production, these are kind of the things that we want to bring across and help the startups. Now, of course, on the other, other end of the spectrum, we're looking at things like software that we can help the startups with. And finally, I think um, specific in terms of companies that want to scale beyond where they are at this point of time. We've got a global distribution network that we can bring across to the startups too. Right. So a third of our business today is in um, North America, a third of it is in Europe, a third of it is in Asia. And we work with, for example, um, retail chains like Best Buy in, in the US, uh, Media Saturn in um, Europe. We've got uh, Tsingtong and uh, Tmall in uh, China. So these are some of the benefits that we're trying to bring to the startups as opposed to a traditional VC right. that may be primarily focused on uh, financial returns. Okay, so Razer is your target audience are you know, gamers. Do you see yourself as a mainstream company now or do you see yourself kind of aiming at like really niche specialized gamers? Do you want to be a mainstream company? So for ourselves, you know, we've created a bit of a cult brand of sorts. You know, we've got um, gamers that tattoo the Razer logos and themselves, they set up uh, Razer shrines and, and um, you know, we have a huge following. And that's really, you know, the core of what the company is. For gamers, by gamers, and, and that's what we want to continue focusing on. The enthusiast segment, uh, the um, gamer who's passionate about design, who's passionate about technology. And uh, that's really what we want to focus on. Now, what we've realized, however, is that while we don't necessarily want to go mainstream, Mainstream is coming to us mm. from the premise of, if you see things like um, uh, Pokemon Go, for that matter, you know, people who don't necessarily identify themselves as gamers are slowly looking at um, gaming being one of the most uh, engaging forms of entertainment. Now, on top of that, and maybe to segue back to the um, conversation on Z Ventures, the gaming community or the gamer community is also the perfect um, user base to test new technologies on. Now, if you look at it historically, um, you've got motion sensing, you know, from the Nintendo Wii. 
you know, uh, we've got VR, you know, like Oculus and stuff like that. So gamers tend to be tech savvy. Um, they're very comfortable beta testing technology and more importantly, evangelizing it to the entire gaming community. Right. And the way we see it, that there will probably be more gamers in the future than any other segment of uh, entertainment. Okay. You mentioned Pokemon Go. Huge success. We're going to have um, John on stage, I think, tomorrow. Um, are you guys, do you want to build something as successful as that? Do you want to build a Pokemon Go ever? Is that like in your sights? Could, could you do it? Um, I think traditionally for us, we want to continue doing what we're good at, which is focusing on um, gamers, building great product, um, software, and services for gamers. And uh, that's what we're going to continue doing. And, you know, when, when we first started 10 years ago, gaming wasn't a buzzword, right? Hardware was even worse. You know, try pitching anybody 10 years ago about hardware, and people would go like, no, 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 that's not something that we're interested in. Today, hardware is seeing a renaissance of sorts. Gaming is getting a lot of prime time because there's PC gaming, there's console gaming, there's mobile gaming. Gaming is bigger than movies, it's bigger than music, and there's a huge amount of interest in gaming right now. And so for ourselves, we've been in an opportune position to, to take advantage of that. But, you know, while there are masses coming into gaming today, these masses will probably leave when there's something, you know, bigger, newer, shinier right. to, to look at. Ourselves, we know what we're good at, which is, you know, designing stuff for gamers. We're always going to be doing that. You know, whether the, the industry is big or whether it's small, that's what we're good at and that's what we'll do. Okay. Does that mean you don't want to build a Pokemon Go? <laughs> um, or yes? I think if it comes yeah. along, that, and if it's something that um, we can build for gamers everywhere. Yeah. And look, there are two billion gamers out there right now. I know. No, probably did, you like, did you look at that and think, damn it, we should have done that. We could have done that. Uh, you know, did you, did you have a moment like that or did you think, Oh, that's so cool. Let's build a little communication layer on it, which you guys did. Well, I think we just built stuff that we like. Like, right. you know, we started off as a peripherals company. And um, candidly, because I travel so much, and I was looking at, for example, gaming laptops in the past, and they weren't yeah. really gaming laptops. They were big, heavy, and thick. And so today, you know, we, we built a team uh, in the past couple of years, and today we make probably some of the best uh, gaming laptops uh, in yeah. the world. And that's what we do. We like to build things for ourselves. And I see a Razer gaming laptop there, which is great. Um, and, and we're really taking over you know, the world in the sense where there are gamers out there, and we are really hyper-focused on the gamers. And that's what right. we do. OK, OK. What do you think the next generation of, of games is going to look like? So that's a, you know, we could be here all day. <laughs> um, in 10 words or less. Sure. <laughs> So, I mean, so, you guys are doing stuff in VR. You know, you're doing really amazing stuff. Is it, is it all going to be in VR? Or are we going to be, you know, obviously mobile games are massive right now. Um, but, you know, we've still got a lot of consoles. Sure. What, what, what is, where, is the pot, where is the hockey puck going? Where are you guys going with that? Do you sure. Think? So gaming, I think overall, or gamers as a demographic, it's not just growing um, horizontally in different geographies. Right. So, you know, traditionally in the past, it was the US, Europe, Korea, and stuff like that. You've got China now, Southeast Asia. These are, you know, new geos that um, gaming is growing really quickly everywhere. But we're also seeing gaming, uh, gamers, um, the demographic growing horizontally. Gamers are getting older, you know, as a whole. You know, gamers are, are more familiar playing um, different types of games. And even today, a two-year-old is swiping on a, on a tablet, you know, yep. right away. So given the whole proliferation of the entire uh, stack, we think gaming is going to go uh, ubiquitous. It's going to be everywhere. Um, right. It's going to be a lot more pervasive. And definitely, I think immersion is really the key. It's about VR, it's about having the, the most immersive gaming experiences out there. Now, be it whether it's um, an MMO that you play on the PC that gives you a call on your mobile phone that tells you to go back to the game, um, or you know, different layers of VR. I think immersion is the key. OK. Now, just go back to Z Ventures for two seconds. Um, one of the categories you guys are doing in there is robotics. Are you guys building a robot? <laughs> <laughs> so we are excited about robotics. Um, so at Razer, we've got uh, internal labs that we try all kinds of different things. And you know, you may have seen at CES, we tend to, yep. you know, be at CES in a in a big bang of sorts. Yeah. Um, and we're always looking at new things, looking at new interfaces of sorts. Um, we think robotics is an exciting um, new area that uh, there's a huge amount of innovation. And 
I think for us, because we, we see it as a confluence between software, firmware, and hardware, and that's something that we can, as a company, help uh, new startups, and I, that's one of the areas that we're looking at. I'm going to take it as a yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Now, a little bit about Razor itself as a company. Now, you mentioned all of these new areas. There's also a lot of new companies coming into the space. Who do you see now as your biggest competitor? So th that's an odd question of sorts, um, because I think we, we are pretty much um, a different company in the sense that um, we represent probably a company on a newer wave of things that, that everyone's kind of seeing at this point of time. So traditionally, companies back in the, in the day would be great at a certain thing. So for example, they're great at making peripherals, or they're great at making laptops, or, 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 or what have you. And these traditional companies would then say, OK, I'm going to carve out you know, a segment for productivity. I'm going to be, do a productivity mouse, for example, or laptop. Right. I'm going to do a gaming thing. I'm going to do something for designers. I'm going to do something for, for um, um, I don't know, sports people or, or what have you. But, but that has changed. Ourselves as a company, we've evolved to really look at the user and with greater affluence, with greater focus on getting great experiences. We see brands like that coming about, you know, action sports brands, you know, brands that will say, okay, I'm going to figure out how to do these different categories for one person, whether it's a, uh, a somebody who's a, a cyclist or, or somebody who's um, excited about um, or, or anything. Like for ourselves, we are focused on just one person, and that's the gamer. Now, right. the thing is, do we have competitors in the peripheral space? Yes. Do we have competitors in the laptop space? Yes. Right? Do we have competitors, for example, in the software platform space? Yes. But there isn't a single company that is just hyper-focused on the gamer to provide right. all of that. So we don't really have a competitor of sorts right now today. Um, hmm. and, uh, not today. Not today. Yeah. What about Amazon, though? You know, they've made a massive investment in Twitch. Uh, they've acquired Twitch. Yes. Um, they are now finally finding success with hardware. Um, you know, with, with, with their interesting, with, with the um, Echo and everything. Mm -hmm. So w do you think that that might be a company that could keep you up at night one day? Um, <laughs> I think for us, um, the entire industry for gaming is just so big. Yeah. Um, we are huge fans of what Amazon is doing with Twitch. Um, Twitch is a great partner of Razer, and we work really closely together with them. Um, right. And what they're doing on, at Lumberyard, for example, and the studios that they have, you know, that's... That's a company we, we have a huge amount of respect for. Got it. But because the entire industry is massive, right? If you look at the movies industry or the music industry, they're, they're large companies that, that go throughout the entire ecosystem without competing, so to speak. It's true, yeah. And, and we see gaming being so much larger than, than movies and music. There is just this massive you know, upswing of um, opportunities for all of us. The key That's for us is point. what not we want to do as opposed to you know, the opportunities presented. Okay. Okay, let's talk about investment for a second. So I know you guys are now investing in startups, but you're a startup too, 18-year-old startup. Um, so now some of your investment you've disclosed, some of it you haven't, some of it has just been reported, and then you, you know, confirm it. Um, are you guys raising any more money now? Um, not right now. So, so we're not raising any more capital at this point of time. In fact, we haven't raised a lot of capital in the past couple of years. Right. For us, um, we've been you know, really focused on doing investments through our own war chest that we've built through the co uh, past couple of years. And when you talk about startups, uh, investing in other startups, um, that's one of the things that I do see coming up as a new trend of sorts, because a lot of us are staying private a lot longer, and uh, this is a great opportunity for us to do a couple of things, to, to tap into the startup ecosystem, to contribute back to the community and the ecosystem also at the same time. And uh, I expect to see a lot more uh, other startups do that. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, the strate strategic investment funds for sure. Um, but so, but, but you guys are like opening stores everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, you're you're building more hardware. You're building different kinds of hardware, and you're investing in startups. How, are you funding all of that yourselves from your from your current coffers, or are you going to need more money? You're going to go out there and raise more for that. So um, we did a recent Series C, um, which um, I think was reported on TechCrunch. <laughs> 
All right. I think uh, so, yes. So, so what we are doing primarily for all these new activities are actually funding it internally from our own coffers okay. um, at this juncture. And, we, and we, we see a continued need to fund new startups because I don't believe that you know, for ourselves, we're going to be all things to all gamers, so to speak. You can't be all things to all gamers. We see a lot of um, incredible talent out there. We see a lot of startups that could, you know, we could help them bring their services to our users and give a leg up in, immediately for, you know, with 20 million use, active users, for that matter. Or to, to say, okay, instead of just distributing through, you know, a small platform, why don't, you, why, why don't we get you global immediately through all our channels everywhere? Now, if you need to um, meet any uh, prospective customers or partners, you can use any of our 10 offices worldwide. So, and I think over and above, uh, the difference for us between um, Razor or Z Ventures as a um, startup, uh, a fund for startups by a startup, is that we've got the experience of scaling from two people to a th or, uh, close to a thousand people worldwide, 10 offices, etc. So that's the real difference. We want to partner with venture capital firms and give that strategic value of um, helping companies, you know, just uh, go from zero to 100 immediately. Okay. Um, you, you, a minute ago, you were when, when you were first talking about raising money, you said you think a lot of private companies are staying private for longer, but eventually you may start to consider what the next step might be. Um, where are you on things like IPO plans? And in general, what's your opinion on a company like Razor going public? Could you go public um, if you wanted to right now, for example? Sure. I think, I think for us, um, we've considered going public uh, for some time, but the key for us is we want to make sure that we are a company that um, is ready to go public. I think um, there is no real reason for us to stay private, you know, um, but we remain opportunistic. Um, we want to be, I mean, we want to make sure that all the corporate governance is, is all addressed. We want to make sure that um, or we've uh, crossed the uh, T's and dotted the I's on, on pretty much everything. And of course, it's also a factor of um, the economy and how the markets, whether it's open, et cetera. But you know, we remain open to, to that and we just keep an eye on it. Do you have a time frame for when you might consider an IPO or anything like that? That's a little bit like asking what's the time frame on one of our Razor products. And you know, I know there aren't many pieces. <laughs> I think you probably there. have them for both, by the way. <laughs> you have right. answers for both. It'll, you it'll be ready when it's ready. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are you profitable? Um, I think our core business is very profitable, but um, for ourselves, we are doubling down. So th that's why I think right. we say we are a 10-year-old startup, so to speak. We've got a very profitable core business, but we've got some really exciting initiatives that we're doubling down on and always looking to, to um, reinvent or to revolutionize new industries. So to put things in perspective for that matter, you know, we were the first to start this entire gaming peripherals um, industry of right. sorts, right? Yeah. So we were first to focus on that. And back when PCs had become a little traditional and, and boring and dated, and when I said, look, we are going to go and reinvent the um, traditional PC laptop, you know, I think many people said, look, that's a commoditized industry. You don't want to get into it. But what we've done in the past couple of years is that we've created an entire new category of right. sorts. So we continue to do that. We are continuing to invest heavily in terms of R&D, um, and that eats into the bottom line. But that's stuff into the bottom line that we are comfortable with, and uh, what we want to focus on is to create, create truly great product and services. Now, Z Ventures is also an opportunity for us to bring more services and partners. I've, I'm seeing some really great new technology around, and we welcome any of the startups up, out there, be it whether it's... Um, you know, in robotics or gaming software or anything that we can at Razor bring value to, we'd love to be able to, to talk to you. Okay. Um, okay, so we're running down on time now, so I just wanted to ask you another question. <laughs> um, okay, uh, so just two last questions. I hope we have time for them. Um, one is about your, um, something that I would lo love to ask for, you know, other startups that might be in the same position as you guys. So you've got strategic investor, in Intel. Mm -hmm. What I'd be quite interested to know is if you guys, how you work with them as a strategic investor. I noticed that like, you, you put out a great webcam earlier this year. It's got fantastic Intel um, technology, technology real in sense it. Technology. Yeah, the real sense. It's really excellent camera. I, did you guys think of that and then approach Intel, or is Intel influencing how you guys are choosing what products you develop. 
They're like, we have this stuff, we really want to do it. If we invest in you, will you build something to use sure. this? How so does it work? And do you advise startups uh -huh. to do something different than you guys have done in that way? Um, so Intel Capital is one of the, um, the corporate ventures groups that we've kind of modeled Z Ventures a little after because we've got great respect for them. And uh, it's a bit of two things, right? Intel's a behemoth. We, we actually use Intel Capital to kind of navigate through Intel as we, we want to work with their CPU team or the RealSense team. And they've got some truly great technologies that what we do at Razer is that we look at it from the lens of a, of a gamer. And we go like, okay, that's cool stuff that we want. So for, the, for example, RealSense um, that we've put into uh, the Razer Stargazer automatically removes the background of any streamer. And that's yeah. really, really cool. So what I think Intel looks to Razer is probably innovation in the gaming space. We have channels that can reach gamers immediately. And we've got a, an audience that's hugely passionate about technology. Yeah. So it's a bit of a symbiotic relationship. We found it uh, hugely strategic for us, and that's one of the reasons why we've also come up with uh, Z Ventures with yeah. a bid to be able to um, reach out um, for startups to, to, to reach out to as many gamers as possible. Interesting. So almost following the Intel model for you guys. Absolutely. But in a bit of a smaller set. Yeah, a smaller scale one. OK, I, I have one other question, which I just quickly want to ask. Now, Razer is Min. What happens when Min wants to leave? <laughs> Do you ever have plans to leave? <laughs> just a quick answer, because we're totally um, out of time now. So firstly, I don't think Razer is Min. I think okay. we've got a great team of, of designers and engineers. And um, so I think you know, that pretty much answers it. OK. No plans to go there. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Well, after you. Thanks so much.